Hi, my name is Krzysztof Dobrowolski. I've been appointed the new coordinator for ecumenical and interreligious dialogue for the Roman Catholic Diocese of Calgary. I will be your host here in lovely Montreal as I attend this conference on ecumenism and interreligious dialogue being hosted here. It should prove to be an incredible event and we begin tonight. I hope you enjoy. I'm Deacon Anthony Mansour, the Executive Director of the Canadian Centre for Ecumenism. And uh, you are the host for this conference That's this correct. year? We organized it all this year. We organized it this year for the North American Academy of Ecumenists. Does this happen every year? Yes, the North American Academy of Ecumenists meets yearly, always the last full weekend in September, but in a different city across North America. Last year was in Washington, um, this year is in Montreal, next year in Pennsylvania and probably the year after that, maybe in Halifax. And who are the members of this group? Uh, essentially, most of them are scholars. However, anyone that's very interested in finding out how churches are moving uh, forward, how dialogues are, ha what's happening, uh, the different developments in the inter-Christian dialogues, well, this is the place to do it. That's an exchange of scholarly papers. And what do we hope to achieve this weekend? Well, you know, this year is the 100th anniversary of the Edinburgh Conference of 1910. Um, we had 100 years of dialogue, 100 years working to get together, cooperating together. So now what are we doing the next 100 years, especially in societies that's becoming more and more secularized, especially in a society that's becoming uh, more pluralistic. So where does Christianity fit in? What can we do and what can we do to move forward and preaching the good word? The good. Now, you're a Catholic deacon? Uh, I'm Orthodox. Oh, you're with the Orthodox Church? Correct, with the Orthodox Church in America. Okay. So we have representatives from which variety of groups here? All varieties, I think. <laughs> uh, we have from Moscow, Egumen Philip, who's the Vice Chairman of the Department of External Church Relations for the Moscow Patriarchate. Uh, we have people from, uh, of course, a, a lot of different Catholics, Presbyterian, uh, we'll find Baptist, we'll find um, a United Church of Canada, we'll find, uh, I think, the whole rainbow. Do we have uh, representatives from other religions? Uh, no, they're all within Christianity. Uh, uh, Egumen Philip, who does dialogues internationally also with the Jewish community and Muslim communities. So that's that. Uh, the center does a lot of initiatives in interfaith uh, dialogues. So we'll see uh, what different dioceses are doing. Well, thank you, Deacon Anthony, for this introduction. Thank you. Roman Catholic, and for that matter, Orthodox lands. Impressed by the social teaching of the Catholic Church, I've dealt with this in several publications. Uh, we are not against the Catholic uh, schools or uh, um, uh, Catholic uh, orphanages in Russia. In Iraq. And there were the usual kinds of questions about the state of the church in Canada and then the state of the Armenian Orthodox Church in Iraq, what their particular struggles were. We talked about all those things, but the conversation rose really fast. ...to a particular dimension of our dialogue is the need to have a dynamic eschatological focus. I don't think there's anyone... Le présent colloque qui nous rassemble nous fait voir, regarder très loin dans l'avenir. Each age has, has one issue to think through and only one... ...feared or suspected um, by members of their own church. ...being again with the North American Academy. As Sandra just uh, said... Yeah, 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 Humanism at its at its core is about relationship, and what these what we've been doing here, what these theologians have been doing, has been has been really relationship building. 
And in between these two end pieces, uh, one that points out all the, the wonderful things that came from Edinburgh, and the other one that points out uh, some of the drastic uh, changes in Christianity uh, that came out of Edinburgh. In between that has been a wonderful conversation about um, the impact of secularity, uh, the church in Russia, and the position it finds itself in in trying to recover a tradition that had tried to be killed by secularity. Um, and uh, then hearing from a wonderful panel of uh, folks in Canada from the various perspectives in which they are engaging um, the churches together and, and, and the prospect of Christian unity in, in our own times and places. Um, the comments I've had from many of our members is just it's been a wonderful um, meeting. Uh, people are very happy. Uh, uh, our host, the Canadian Centre for Ecumenism, has done a wonderful job. The attendance has been very good. Um, last night, Margaret Farley shared with us some wonderful insights about uh, how we build forward into the future ecumenically. It's a tough time in the churches um, for economic reasons. Um, the way Christianity meets culture today is in a place that it has never been in its history. Um, human culture is going through major kinds of changes and nobody knows how to write that book. And in the midst of that, we are in our various churches trying to find the right feel and context of how to practice an authentic Christianity in our time. And sometimes our experiments rub against one another's principles. And so how do we remain in the room together in fellowship and love um, and in sincere interest to realize that which God would have us realize? This meeting, um, this academy, the North American Academy of Ecumenists, is a wonderful fellowship of um, top class thinkers and practitioners of Christianity who have developed a long history of personal relationships and they know that they can come together, be very frank in their various positions, be very respectful, understand where others have come from. Um, we will shake our heads at the policies and procedures of our own church, knowing what impediments we ourselves are to that which God calls us to be and one in Christ. So um, I always personally look forward to this meeting because this is a place where people really do understand the issues and um, they love each other more strongly because of it. And you hear some of that love right now. Yeah, yeah, you hear that. The audio will be quite yeah, strong. Yeah, so yeah. That's okay. That was a that was a long-winded uh, answer to your first question. I was wondering uh, what is curious to I feel to our diocese in Calgary and to uh, Western Canada is how the new insights that, that are coming from this, for lack of a better term, think tank of scholars, how it filters down to the average layperson. What do you feel? were one or two of the key new nuggets that seemed to really reveal themselves here today. Was it, uh, was it uh, perhaps accountability as opposed to responsibility or what would be? Well, um, you reference uh, our opening speaker's final um, observation about um, an intentional commitment on the part of the churches to be mutually accountable to one another. And in many ways, uh, Father Philip from the Russian church lifted up a similar kind of theme. Um, we may not be at the position of full communion um, yet with, uh, with the churches. That doesn't mean we can't hold each other accountable to what we say is the best in our own tradition. Um, 
One of the insights that I've learned from Yves Congar uh, is actually the pilgrimage of his own life, in which he said, in order to be um, a witness to Christian unity, I have to plumb the depths of my own tradition to become the best possible Catholic I can. And in that process, he realized that um, the Spirit of God was, because he was Catholic, was calling him to embrace wherever the Spirit of God made a witness in the world. And that would mean that as a Catholic one was taken outside of the walls of the church to experience what God was doing with the Spirit among others who embraced Christ. Um, and so when we hold each other mutually accountable, not to our own ideals, but to the ideals they themselves have, uh, espouse, we are making better Christians of one another. Um, and if the example of Eve Conquer is any indication, if we were to adopt this as a promise, we, we could see something like a Vatican II reappear that could really build on realizing our unity in more manifold ways. That echoes the words of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, if you're a Muslim, be a Muslim. If you're a Hindu, be a Hindu. Be what it is that you are so deeply that your barriers between you are no longer right. really divisive. Um, exactly. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Gainesville, Florida for this unfortunate affair that made the headlines. And um, a Jewish speaker at an interfaith rally said, most of us here believe what we believe because we were born into that belief. We did not sit down and sort of weigh the differences among the religions and say, I choose that one. And that's not as though we need to do that, but to become aware of that, to become the best possible uh, practitioner of the religion that we're given is the gateway, I would say, and this would be my personal theology, that would be the gateway to discovering um, what God is doing in other people as well because I would then know very well what God is doing in my own life. And when I'm in tune with that, that actually opens up channels of relationship with other people, no matter what their religion is. Uh, that's a fundamental for me, because I believe God is the God of all creation. This is some interesting points yesterday made about secularism and how secularism is actually helping as a catalyst to this process of recognition. have any thoughts on that? Well, I believe there are ways in which um, secularism um, is a friend of the gospel when it helps peel away the things that in any of our churches have been accumulations of, uh, as a, uh, of human tradition. Secularism has a way of peeling those away. And so one of the things that, one, that I've discovered in ecumenical work is that the better I know my tradition, the better I'm able to engage somebody in their tradition, and I know the difference then between what my religious perspective is, what my common human perspective is, and what your religious perspective is, and what your common human perspective is. And among Christians, we share a great deal in what it means to be human. That's the secular world in many ways. We actually share a great deal in what it means to be Christian as well. And the things that separate us um, become very significant for us. But if one were simply to weigh them on a scale of how much we have in common and how much is distinct, that which is in common would weigh far more. Thank you for your insights. You're welcome. Anything Thank else you, you want to add? Well, I uh, wish um, great blessings upon the people of Calgary, and I hope that you will find ways to um, find God 
in the other. Thank you. Thank you.